Xevious was the first AI-powered video game, and after 40 years, it's finally landed on the Amiga. Stay tuned for an in-depth review and celebrate eight years of this wacky show on episode 400 of Amigos, Everything Amiga. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're talking about Xevious. Oh, man. X, baby. That's I love right. It. We're going to dispense with the pleasantries this time, Aaron, because there's going to be pleasantries aplenty yeah, on that's the back true. side of this show. On the back side of me, there's going to be some pleasantries. <laughs> I doubt it's that pleasant back there, to be honest with you. <laughs> we're going to dive right in and talk about Xevious, Aaron. Let's do it. Oh, yes, Boat. Uh, the time was classic. That is Xevious. I'm so used to hearing the, the song kick up as soon as that's over. It's yeah. weird to just hear silence. It is strange. But it also pleasant. So, you know, I like a little the deep dive into the history of these games. Yeah, man. And so I'm guess what? I'm doing it. So, Xevious. We're going to talk about the arcade game for a minute here before we deep dive into the Amiga version. You know, this was developed uh, way back... And released in 82 in Japan, and it crept in here uh, to North America in early 83, Boat. And was published uh, and developed by Namco. Namco, mm -hmm. which would go on to be a legendary name, just to go over a few of their huge hits. You've got your Galaxian. Probably their first big hit, I would say, would be Galaxian. Then they, were, they had Pac-Man, Galaga, Tekken, Ridge Racer. Some big names in there, uh, Boat, over the years. Lots of big racing games. Uh, they're really a, a title so that was quality yeah, as well. Yeah, and they continue to produce games to this day. Yeah. They merged with Bandai, and Namco Bandai puts out tons of stuff all the time. That's a good merge, by mm -hmm. the way, I think, when they picked up Bandai. So, uh, get this. I'm going to try to pronounce this boat. This game was designed uh, by Masanobu Endu. Mm. Now, he was not uh, what I would call a top. She didn't put out a ton of big stuff. He was responsible for this. Which was big enough. And he also uh, did a game called Tower of Druga. It's Tower of Draga. Draga. Now you, is this the game that you had the little diorama yeah. of? I, this is this is a hugely important yeah. game that is mostly unknown in the United States. No, I, well, I mean, it's it was it was a genre definer yeah. at the time, as I recall. A big deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of these days, maybe that'll get the, get, get the nod mm -hmm. over. Uh, of course... Uh, the artists on this were also super legendary. Hiroshi Ono, who worked on Galaga, Dig Dub, Mappy, and he did the bezel for Galaxian. That's a pretty good... That's a good That's resume. a litany of genius mm -hmm. right there. Uh, composer was uh, Yuriko Kino. So, what makes Xevious uh, a fun game is that it's, it's a very pretty uh, game. It's a shooting game. Uh, it was sort of unique at the time. It was very unique at the time. But really, a lot of people don't know this, and I know you know because we discussed that Xevious is really sort of another genre-defining game. It was a moderate to big hit in the States, but in Japan, this was like the biggest hit they'd had since Space Invaders. This was mm. a huge, huge hit that people just could not get enough of. Uh, the purpose of the game is you you fly the, uh, I believe it's called perhaps the Solview. Is that you want to try that one? I think it's the Solvalu. Solvalu which is a ship, and you're just basically, there's not a deep plot here. You're driving over this Well, land. there actually is a deep plot. There is a deep plot? There Give us a the deep plot, plot. Boat. So what happened was uh, uh, long, long ago, this, the the uh, the aliens landed on Earth. Yeah. And uh, they, Typical. this is your, your, your ancient aliens shtick. Yeah. So they landed on Earth. Things on Earth got bad. They left. They left us with all of the uh, sort of the, the big uh, paintings that you see, or not the paintings, but those etchings into the earth. Yeah, those, those are things, cool. Yeah, those were marks of the ancient aliens. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is a fact-based game. And uh, <laughs> I it, think I saw someone on the History Channel about this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so the aliens have come back to reclaim Earth. Your job as pilot of the Solvalu mm -hmm. is to uh, rid the Earth of this alien scum. Now I gotta ask you, being the, this being an arcade game, where did where did this lore come from? This was the first arcade game, I believe, that actually had a story. 
Where did the story come from? It's not in the game. It's There's not. A... It's not in the game. But I believe it was on the bezel, like on the control panel. Really? And I, it was You're also it was also present in all of their marketing materials. I sure wish I'd looked when we were when we were at the Galloping Ghost Arcade. That mm-hmm. would have been fun. That's neat. Good. Good tip. I've never heard any of that stuff. Uh, so. Uh, the, of course, the, your ship has two weapons. This was also unique. You've got a, uh, basically a front shot, and you've got a bomb, and you've got a reticle that floats around in front of you to aim the bomb. It actually is a great system. This is the first game that also had that. Yeah, and it works great. I mean, they didn't blow it. It was mm-hmm. right out of the gate. It was gold. Uh, this game has 16 connected areas. They loop after you go through them. Uh, they uh, Also, it could, sort of, uh, it could sort of adjust the difficulty on the fly, can't it, Boat? This is, uh, I, there are some, there's a litany of firsts yeah. that this game did first. This is the first game with a scrolling background that was not a star field. Okay? Oh, neat. The I didn't know that either. first one. You got to think about it. This came out in 82. Yeah. It's so yeah. incredibly early. Oh, yeah. And it's, and it, I remember when it came out. It's an unbelievably beautiful game, but yeah. you're right. I, I never thought about that. This is the first game to have named, uh, like, a variety of ships that actually have attack patterns that aren't just swooped down at you. They'll come on, they'll fire, they'll go away. You know, this is something that other games, you know, like Galaga, they would swoop down at you, but they kind of all swoop the same way. This is the first game that actually has defined attack patterns. They have uh, all of the enemies are sort of markedly different in the way that they look. This is a game, the first game that has a boss battle. Yeah. A big, huge, honking thing that you got that's got to come out. Andor Genesis Mothership. But boat. the crown jewel of the first is this is the first, and this is this is as timely as today's headlines, the first AI powered video game. In this game, the if you play aggressively, the game will send more monsters or more robots out at you, and they will fire more regularly. If you play more passively, you won't get that. This was designed to let players that were more inexperienced have a little bit easier time. Once they figure that you are doing better, you're firing more shots, you are going to get a higher challenge. That's incredible. It's And, you know, something else that surprised me when I was doing this research, because, I mean, this game looks great. I mean, it really is one of the standout-looking games. It runs on what they call the Galaga board. Mm. So I assume what that means is this runs on similar or the same or a similar board to what Galaga... I mean, you look at the two of them. Mm-hmm. There's a broad difference there. So, I, you know, along the lines of that's good stuff. I was surprised to read this. Early, ga- early versions of this game when they were working on it were named Cheyenne and took place during the Vietnam War. That's right. That's bizarre. There, there was a huge staff turnover at, at Namco over the course of the development of this game. And that was one of the plot points that went by the wayside. They decided, hey... This may be culturally insensitive. We're going to go with the good old aliens. They made the right call. Yeah. I mean, I, right, I don't like the thought of this as a, as a Vietnam, Vietnam no. game. Bad, bad no. call. Also, I was surprised to read that this originally was called Zebes with a Z. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, they, and they thought it would look cooler if it was an X, and they were right. They made the right call on that, too. <laughs> So, uh, clearly, they had a good thing in front of them, and it performed, like I said, unbelievably. Uh, it it broke re- all it broke records that hadn't been broken since '78 when Space Invaders were out. It was the top grossing arcade table in the charts in November of '83. And you got to think of what was out in '83. Oh. It's not like you're competing against duds. It's like all the best games. Listen, are- I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a rundown of, yeah. of what came out the same year. Of course, this is '82 <clears throat> because this launched in Japan, right? In '82, it's so late really, '82. Yeah. yeah. So you were up against <clears throat> Ms. Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Pole Position. Hubert, Joust, Robotron, Moon Patrol, Tron, and Time Pilot. Yeah. Look all at all in that same time. And there were period. several good name. There were several Namco games in that bunch yeah. too. So they were, man, they were killing it back mm. in those days. Uh, in North America, it, re- it was number four on the Play Meter Arcade charts in '83. And Atari, who was the uh, they distributed it in the U.S., sold uh, 5,295 arcade cabs by the end of '93, earning about 11 million dollars. Uh, this did get a lot of home ports, boat. As you would imagine, it's funny though. Uh, the the big ports for this thing were like the NES, which I, they said was like the they, according to Wiki, this was the killer app on the on the old Famicom. Well, the, 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 it is a very very good port. The NES. Didn't, I don't think I played it. it. We didn't get it in the West until like eighty seven or eighty eight. Really, that so would it explain was, it. It was, a, it was a delayed release for a lot of uh, a lot of arcade titles. 
Uh, Nintendo didn't put them out right at first because they wanted to put out, you know, sort of new gaming experiences because they saw Atari was mostly the, you know, the, the system that would just put out arcade ports. And But we eventually did get these games <clears throat> later on down the line, and it is a very faithful rendition of Xevious. Very good. Now, I want to... The game we're talking about today on the Amiga actually also has a switch that lets you play Super Xevious. So I want to touch on that real quick before we get into the game okay. proper. Super Xevious is not a whole lot different than Xevious. And what and they it have some different enemies. They increase the difficulty uh, and uh, some different scoring things. I mean, that you're talking uh, fairly moderate changes. It was sort of a... What was what's the faster, more difficult Cubert or whatever? It's mm. sort of like that. They just they ramped it up. I don't know if I ever saw, and also it was a conversion kit. I should mention that, which obviously I'm not sure I ever saw this in the arcades here. Do you remember Casey? No, super, super no. And, and from what what I read was that uh, basically this was designed to placate uh, arcade owners who said, you know, there are people in here that have mastered this game. They yeah. can play forever on a quarter. You need to release a version that's the same game, but just make it harder. And that's basically right. what it is. Right, right, So, with all that in the, in the books, this was a huge hit. And by the way, I should mention, there was only one home release of Super Z. on this X68000. I'm surprised by huh. that. That's, that's, it that's is funny that a game this huge, uh, it, I mean, it was big in the States. I saw it everywhere mm -hmm. back in the day. So it did pretty well, but clearly in Japan it was a it was a real phenomenon. Yeah, in in fact, there was a, uh, a CGI movie that was supposed to come out in like 1998 that was a Xevious base. Ooh, was, how neat! It was, uh, I believe, it was near completion, but never released for some reason. Oh, that's that's yeah. a shame. I'd like to have seen that. S snippets exist on YouTube. So that said, we look at the Amiga version of Xevious. This was just released uh, early this year, uh, and I believe. That there's still work being done on it, you know, some up, some tweaks and whatnot. So uh, the Amiga version of this was uh, put together by a fellow named uh, Mark McDougal, aka T T C Dev. And what he did, he he was in charge. What his aspect of it was, he was reverse engineering and working with some other code, which we'll get to. Uh, you also had uh, J O T D, which we've heard his name before, Jean uh, Francois Fabre. And Andres uh, Dabrowski, who did the music, who I, and by that I mean I assume this is all when they transcode this thing over. I'm not exactly sure how that all works out, but that's who they've got credited here. Um, <clears throat> so, according to their website, the game features identical to the arcade, including uh, pseudo random number generation, original dip switch op options, except for the ca uh, cocktail. Uh, all graphics and colors reproduced perfectly. And one to two player support and high score save. And this is a transcode from the original arcade game to 68K assembly. So a lot of big words there, Boat. Well, you know, it's, we know it's, transcode. We know about transcode <laughs> from our time with the Coco. Yeah. I believe that this might be the first transcode that we've covered on Amigos for the Amiga. I don't, I can't think of any other ones mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Uh, now, we, like Boat said on, on the Coco show, we've talked about some of the transcoding they've done on the Coco to great effect. Uh, including uh, games like Donkey Kong, Robotron, I believe Joust was mm -hmm. another one they did. Uh, and these are, I mean, they're top shelf. They, yeah. It's amazing that a Coco can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but this is, I would say, a more advanced game than the Coco could ever could oh think of gosh, running yes. in terms of oh uh, transcode. Although it's funny, those are about the same era. Mm -hmm. It is funny. Uh, so you gave this a go, Boat, and you literally have to coin up at everything in mm -hmm. this. Uh, what were your initial impressions when this popped on the screen? This is not one of my favorite games. In uh, real life. In real life. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know what that means. On the arcade. <laughs> I don't know why I said in real life. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, but when I play this game, I just have to constantly remind myself that what you're seeing is just a, this is this is the genesis of, you know, the Raiden, Alcon, all of these vertical-oriented shooters where you are, where you're soaring over this uh, this pastoral landscape, yeah, where you have things that are driving on the roads that you have to bomb, you know, where you have enemies that have all these different attack patterns, where these huge bosses swoop <laughs> in. That said, I don't believe that Xevious is a is a game that stands the test of time. I think that it was quickly surpassed by many other games that were just better. Yeah, um, and I'll give you a couple reasons why. One, even though there are multiple different enemy ships in this game. 
they're all basically variations on hexagons. Uh, the, 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 the rendering engine had a hard time rendering out completely uh, circular uh, enemies. Originally, the main big boss bad guy was supposed to be a sphere, your classic UFO sphere, but they couldn't they couldn't get it to do it right, so they had to make it like a hexagon. Um, wow, that's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, this is uh, there's no there's no enemy there's no power ups in this game, and of course power ups is a huge deal when you're playing a shooter because it sort of gives you incentive other than score to blow things up. Yeah. Um, I don't like the looping stages. I know that's another first. This is the first game that where you just progress from stage to stage seamlessly. Yeah. But I like a little break in the action. You know, you beat the boss, take your hands off the stick, you wipe the sweat off your brow. Maybe you see your shot percentage or whatever. You get a bonus score and then boom, you're back in. This game, the infinite scrolling, it just isn't for me. What do you think? Is this Does this stand the test of time for you? I, I play Xevious, I played it in the arcade, but it was hard, and mm-hmm. I wasn't that good at it. And I do play it more at home than I did in the arcade. I'll, you've got to understand that the the infinite scrolling level, 16 different levels that scroll without mm-hmm. loading, okay? That was pretty awesome back sure, then. Sure, sure. And so, it's, I can understand having a little break. I understand that fully, and God knows. This, this is another thing, a long line of games on the Amiga that... Have a level that's too long, right? <laughs> but I don't have a problem with it because they do vary up the the gameplay a little bit on the on the you know the look of it changes, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, to me, it's okay. I can understand your side of it too. But in a game like this, it's okay. But I mean, it is funny that this is not really what stuck because all the games you mentioned, everything from Galaxian all the way up to Raidens and stuff. A lot of those games do have an area where you stop and they mm. tally up a score. Not all of them. Some of them don't. I can, <laughs> I can take it or leave it uh, myself. Uh, this is a game that I, I'm pretty familiar with, though, because I've played this one quite a bit. And it is funny, having played it on here, to look at the differences. Because they're all... I, I, did you notice any of the di- subtle differences between this and the arcade? Not a one. Oh, I did. <clears throat> and I can, I can tell you exactly what they are. Okay. Because I played this on stream a couple weeks ago. If I were watching the footage from stream, so and I'll and also just to be just to double it up, I played this today. I'm going to pull up the poor comparison for you watching at home. So the uh, the arcade version of this. Now I played this on the on the Mister, and I also played this on the Mini Amiga. So I didn't play this on uh, like a hyper Amiga. I don't know if there would be a difference on mm-hmm. super fast Amiga. Okay. With well, that said. Um, the the game seems a little slower to me, just a smidge. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I noticed was the way that the uh, the thing the targets on the ground move, scroll. Mm-hmm. Okay, they they seem to to me to scoot a little mm-hmm. when they scroll. They now it could be frame by frame. it could be the entire screen looks like that, mm-hmm. and I can only see those items. But they do seem to kind of scoot a little bit mm-hmm. as a put now. Uh, um, it's certainly not a deal breaker. This game is 100% Xevious uh, goodness. There's no problem, but that's something I noticed on it. That and the and the overall speed of it, it's it's it does give the game a little bit of a different flavor. I think I came across one or two graphical issues, but it's funny because when I went back to play this on the arcade version to try to get to the spots where I saw those. I mean, there are tons of graphical imperfections in the arcade version. It's just, it, they're not imperfections. It's just the way they rendered the woods. Mm-hmm. The woods are the number one culprit because you see weird shapes and stuff right. and gaps. Right. And yeah, I like, think it has is... to do with the tile set that they Right. Raised. And you're like, what is this? And you look, but I went back to look at the arcade because I was like, I was sure. I was like, oh, look at this. I pointed it out on stream. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. But I mean, when you go back and play the arcade version, you're getting. Very, you're getting weird gaps, like I said, and mostly it's in the, the wooded area. Uh, the sound was solid. I didn't have any problem with that. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the hit detection seemed fine. The enemies seemed like they should. Everything seemed to run like it should. I mean, it's a trans code, so there should be a whole lot of Did you ever find any of the Easter egg, like where you shoot in a certain place and you get the flags? The ra- from I never have seen that. Me I either. read about that in the, in the docs. And I tried, I mean, obviously you're just going to find these things randomly yeah. by just firing off into nothing, but I never ran into one accidentally. No, I, no. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I did not, I was not very good at the Amiga version of this, if I could be completely honest with you. So while we're talking about it, 
As I mentioned, this game also has uh, Super Xevious. When you boot this game up, it gives you a, 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 a whole host of options, mm-hmm. Boat, uh, including uh, turn off hit detection, infinite man, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And also, you can just t- there's a flag to turn on Super Xevious. And Super Xevious, even I was reading on the on the web page of the guys that make the game, they were talking about Super Xevious. Super Xevious is a is a whole lot of nothing. Mm. In all honesty, it just adds. I mean, it's a in Japan. This was a, in my opinion, you can say if I'm wrong. In this game, Super Xevious was a game built for Japan because they were so hungry for more. Like yeah. you said, that they said, okay, we got to get something going. Mm. And it's funny because they really never came back to this type of music, except there was like some home releases that were like remixed, mm-hmm. including what I found on the MSX. I was surprised, and much like Zaxxon. But for the most part, they didn't really come back to visit Xevious in a 2D way like this. They went on to do some other things with the property. So a game that was as big a hit as this, you just, I'm just kind of surprised. Well, I think Japan has always sort of been like that. You know, you've got uh, the Space Invaders and you've got Deluxe Space Invaders, and then they were done. Yeah. You know, at a certain <clears throat> point, the, the the genre moves forward enough. Well, obviously, that, they made millions of Space Invaders. What else did they, they make? They made not, uh, Space Invaders, uh, uh, Deluxe. They made Space Invaders like 84. There was all, there's, a, there's probably 20 Space Invaders I think that were in the arcade. I, I think there's also the same amount of Zaxxons that came out in Japan. Xevious. Or Xevious. No, not even close. Okay. There's tons more Space Invaders. Okay. After the show, I'll point some out to okay. you. But with all that, that much said, uh, um, getting back to the Amiga game, Super Xevious, it's a nice addition. I can see why they put it in there because it's just basically a little ROM mm-hmm. tweak. Mm-hmm. It works just like you would expect. Uh, uh, you get... Boss battles are quicker. The ships are different. You know, the, uh, I mean, they've got like, there's a Galaxian ship in there. I thought that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of neat, but it's it's not like a whole other game. It's a more more of the same. Uh, but overall, I think this is a great addition to the uh, Amiga library of arcade ports. Uh, this is one that really surprised me too, because like we said, it's not one that I thought was real super popular. And so it made it a lot more fun to play it at home. And this is also one that you can sit around and get good at and at least experience, even if you only play it once. It's, if you haven't played uh, Zeebus in the arcade, it's one that lets you sit down and play this thing, a nice cup or atmosphere on your Amiga, and enjoy it for what it is. You've got all those flags in there, so if you want to play through the whole game to see all the stages you mm-hmm. can, mm-hmm. you know, and it really, uh, that the, the, really the cheating aspect of it really goes a long way to make it more fun. I did turn off hit detection yeah, and mess around. Yeah, I love the fact that they just left that in by default. Sure. Because with a game like this, you want to see that you want to see what the game has to offer and the people that made the game want you to see everything that's right. going into it. Absolutely. Um, this game is available. You can get, download this thing right now for free. This is one of those games that are on the like pay what you want system. This one's one yeah, give them a few bucks. I mean, and we know we it's funny. We what are the odds that we talked to a guy who tran- does transcodes on the on the Coco? Mm-hmm. And I remember I asked him how long it took him to do them. It takes a long time yeah. to do these. It ain't no quick uh, spin it's around. It's not a copy and paste move. No, it's not. You know, like me and Bo ain't doing it. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So if you if you are so inclined, give this guy a few bucks, him and the crew. I believe they're also working on a, a Neo Geo port of this Ooh. as well. Ooh. So uh, so that it's a d- double trouble. But it's funny. You know, it's funny in a, t- in a day and age like we're at now where we have FPGAs and all this stuff. There's all sorts of different options uh, for your attention. It does my heart good to see someone that uh, are taking these old classics mm-hmm. and bringing them home and, you know, and, gi- and giving people with Amigas a chance to try this stuff out. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a great thing, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't believe that we got any Discord reviews on the game this week. But we do have some uh, Discord uh, messages that are just sort of uh, um, episode 400 style messages. I think we'll look into those a little bit later on in the show, Aaron. All right. So that's Xevious and Super Xevious. Uh, give these a shot. Give these guys a couple bucks. I think we both enjoyed them. Right, Boat? Now, before before we... Okay, I take it back. I take it back. Get some action? We got some action. All right. This is okay. why we always check right that's before. That's right. Pajaco, 6502 writes, I'm not a massive fan of Xevious, but I like it. I like it, but it's not in my top 10. Plus, it was always one of those games I could hear in the background of my local arcades. So I do have a fondness for it of sorts. Honestly, you could probably stick this in an arcade cabinet and most folks who are not super fans of the game probably wouldn't know the difference. 
I'm so impressed with this one. I st I have still paid for it as I think the developers deserve credit for, for their hard work. Okay, so the developers ripped apart the ROMs and transcoded it, which to be honest, I think many developers would have done back in the day had they been supplied with the means to do so. So yeah. naturally the game ends up being very faithful to the original. Really worth playing paying for it to get a great arcade experience on your Amiga. Nine out of ten. Very good. And I believe that that is the only Xevious uh, review that we got. So uh, thank you, Pajaco. And as always, if you'd like to leave us a review, just uh, join our Discord community, which you can by joining our Patreon. Very good. That's Xevious. It's good for you. Are you a sketchy tech? Do you have the right tools for the job? Have there been incidents? Next time, don't try to fix it yourself. Send your broken Amiga to Retro Rewind. Get a full diagnostic, a reasonable estimate, and the peace of mind knowing that your machine is in the hands of real technicians with decades of experience and cutting edge repair equipment. Save 10% off your repair with the promo code AMIGOS10. Thank you to RetroRewind.ca for supporting this episode. Bam, boat. Whoops. <laughs> Ignore that, everybody. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> that's, the, that's the perfect segue <laughs> for us to talk about what this is, which is the 400th uh, episode of Amigas. 400 episodes, boat. Yeah. That's about 389, 390 more than I thought we'd get out. We, uh, you know, I read online, the classic statistic is that the average podcast lasts six episodes. Really? The average so, yeah. one? Yeah. So we're we're over at the average. We're, over. Bad. we're way over. In fact, we're over with like ten different podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we started this show. It was a whole other decade. It was a whole other oh, world. Oh man, yeah. yeah. July of 2015. Yeah. Yep. You mounted that chair in the basement. Well, we strapped on the you USB had to say headsets. It like that. I mounted it. That sounds weird. <laughs> Is this what you do? That's not how I'm getting a chair. I don't mount them. <laughs> I remember the first time that we did an episode. <laughs> the way you got to remember, this, Amigos was my third podcast. Yeah. So, oh, the third. Yeah. What so was the my, second? My one? first podcast was Boat of Cars Musical Madness. I didn't heard of okay? this. I would love it if I could figure out what I did with some of these episodes. I think I did three or four episodes. So you didn't hit the average. Where it was a, no, <laughs> where it was an album of the week type thing, and um, and I put them out there, and and then I just stopped doing it. The second podcast I did was the John and Greg show. That and one I remember. The John and Greg show was really where I learned how to do podcasts, like where I learned how to do the back end stuff. Yeah, and that was what gave me the confidence that when you when you when you suggested we started an Amiga podcast, I was like, we can do this. Yeah, uh, uh, you did do the back end, that's for sure. Yeah, you know your other show was very targeted to a specific audience. Yeah, people that went to college with me and my buddy Greg. Because I tried to listen to it a couple of times, I'm like, I don't know. Who, and you guys, you guys are talking about certain people. Remember yeah. Bill? That guy was crazy. And I'd be like. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but we had guests. Everybody we went to college with was on the show. So, but, uh, but it was, uh, yeah. And so anyway, I never really enjoyed it because A, it was fully remote and fully remote, especially in the pre-video days, yeah. was no good. And two, at some point you just, you run out of things to talk about for when you were in college. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. only so many stories you can tell. To be fair, though, we've stretched all our stories infinitely That's over true. the years. That's true. Thank God we make new dumb... Thank God we're do always doing dumb stuff. <laughs> we're crap. always creating new dumb stories. You're always putting in behind a, a stinky car, for example. <laughs> that's and, right. And then that's a story. You're in. You know, uh, this was actually... Brent reminded me just of Brent in the chat. Mm -hmm. This was actually the second podcast we'd ever done, because I forgot about Classical Gas, which me and Brent... Were, it was a gaming show. I think, Brent says we had three episodes. And we did Dragon's Lair, uh, Map Mania, and something else i don't remember what uh but it, it was the old uh uh um uh, rock band mics it was i mean it sounds we've actually we've used it as spiller on arg a couple of times oh, more yeah. combat two he says and so we've played i think two of the three of them have made it to cut I, i've listened to, to both yeah i'm sorry uh, they're, not, they're not that good uh, but uh, it was I didn't learn anything from it and i don't know nothing about the back end so that was all you really boat and I'm gonna I'm gonna put you over here. This is like reminds me of those award shows, you know, like 
I gotta tell you about this guy. He's the gross guy. But Boat is. Boat does all. He was the one that did all the technical stuff for, for the longest time. I didn't know any what OBS was. And Boat would try to teach me. And I would just I would just furrow my brow in a vain attempt to understand what was going on. So it took me a while to catch on. But all the sound stuff, all the video stuff. But you did, you did. If you did anything on this show, you've drugged me across the finish line on some of this stuff. Oh yeah, well, like you know, we had that episode of the Coco show that we thought was going to be lost forever. Yeah, and then you took the cell phone recorded footage and you turned it into an audio masterpiece. Well, I went that far. It was audible. I yeah, was it sounded great. I'm so happy to do that again. By yeah, the way. me too. You know, we don't want to have 400 of those in, uh, 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 this soon. I'm hoping some uh, unaired footage comes from Wizard's Den. Oh, Maybe man. we forgot about it, so we don't have to do that again. Now, let me ask you. I, 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 this is the quintessential question. 400 episodes mm-hmm. of this show. I'm not going to ask you what your favorite game was or your least favorite game or whatever, but are there any moments that stand out above other moments out of 400? Is there, are there shows that you remember that you enjoyed more than others or things we did? It's a lot like Boy Scouts. I only tend to remember the horrible things. <laughs> it is like that. <laughs> and, and, I don't, it, and I don't mean horrible like they were bad, just horrible because I was awful. Like, well, what did you give, throw me a couple out Well, here. you know, the classic, the classic episode, I always believe, was episode 100. Where Graham sent us the, all, that the, the all that booze, yeah, and I, and I drank almost all that booze during the recording of the show. Yeah, um, it's funny. I went back and watched the, the hundredth episode, the two hundredth episode, three hundredth episode, and they're all complicated, but they're pretty much the same. We're stunned that we got this far. <laughs> they can't possibly go much further. And we'd bring on guests and do phone calls and stuff. And inevitably, it was a disaster. <laughs> and then, so really, your boozery was probably the least disastrous thing that happened amongst those shows. Yeah. But we, you know, we, we decided, here we are at 400. And I talked to Boat. I'm like, really, Boat, do we need to have a big, wacky event? Boat was like, hell no, we don't. And so we thought to ourselves, let's just chat about it for a while. I'll put together a, a funny little video and then we'll, because the big one, we will do something pretty epic for 500. Yeah, 500 if we get is going to be the big one. You know, uh, but, you know, I'm pretty happy. You know, listen, the the uh, uh, the uh, Amigos has changed my life. Absolutely. Uh, and as hokey as that is, or maybe sad, I don't know, but it's, uh, it helped me get through the pandemic quite nicely. It keeps me d- active, you know, in fact, probably too active because my buddies and Everybody's always badgering me that, oh, you're doing that. You're doing that again. It's like, I'm doing it. I got, I got stuff to do. You know, we're always doing this stuff. But I've liked doing the podcast. I like the the uh, user, the Taste Valley Classic Computer Club and your parties. I like when we played Odyssey 2. I like when we played electric football. I like when we went to the baseball game. I like that. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. We do wrestling. Mm-hmm. is the, the newest wacky thing. There's, I like that there's stuff. There's so many things have sprung forth from the podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, just the fact that we get together every week. Like, I, you know, when you get older, you don't often get together with your buddies. Yeah. You know? And uh, this is an excuse for us to get together once a week. All of the community stuff. Uh, the fact that I got to go to Ireland twice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All of the people that we've met. The fact that I, you know, I learned technology stuff just for this show, and then I go on and apply it for other jobs that I actually get paid for. Yeah, which stuns You're me. You're killing it out there. Yeah, you know. So th- this show, I mean, it's changed my all, life. All Absolutely. the charity stuff has mm-hmm. been great. You know, the Amigathons, thons—that's really been uh, a lot of fun, and we that those come together every, every year. It's I don't have I have very little negative to say about it. It's been it's been a fun experience, and uh, I think. Uh, as we kick into 400, uh, I think I feel good. I mean, we, we've we teetered on the edge a couple times in the early, in the 200s, I'd mm-hmm. say. You know, and right there towards the beginning of the pandemic, it was really tough, too. But uh, we've been uh, rocking and rolling. It was fun to go to Coco Fest. Yeah. That was fun. We haven't got to do that that much. Yeah. You know, we're looking forward to Boat Fest, and maybe we'll get into some other festivals as the years go on, uh, you know, now that everything's opening back up, I'd mm-hmm. like to hit some of these other ones, you know, maybe Midwest mm-hmm. or whatever. Absolutely. It might be kind of fun to do. Uh, and I also like going to the Target ones. I mean, I wish now we need somebody to throw a, Z, uh, a ZX Spectrum show somewhere in the United States that we could go to that because I don't think anyone's doing that. Just specifically like the Coco people. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Maybe we need to start, maybe we no, need to start up no, another fest. No, no, no. If we only had six or seven fests no. over the course of the Just year. Just stop. <laughs> what? No, absolutely no. But I will say the ZX will be fully celebrated when we get down to a to Boat Fest. Um, 
so just for fun, <clears throat> you know, I've made many of these wacky highlight videos over the years. So I took one, spliced, took out some of the filler, and spliced in some more current stuff. A lot of the stuff no one's seen. And I thought, well, let's run one of these. So uh, sit back and relax uh, and enjoy the wacky stylings of the Goof Squad uh, through a trip through 400 episodes. By the way, you will get to see pretty much every place we shot footage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you'll see, you will see us in front of the TV. We'll see us in front of the wall. You'll see us in front of Boat's horrible green screen. We're everywhere in this. You'll also even see me in my room at one point shooting the show. So sit back, relax, and yes, you will see Boat in a Santa Claus suit. You ready, Boat? Yep, let's Here do it. Here we go. Man. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. You can probably crank up that. And I'm Aaron. <laughs> what happened? I said welcome to Amigos. Oh! <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. What the hell is that? Duh! I've emerged from the green screen. No kidding. I'm also half dressed. Are we on? Hey everyone, welcome to the pre-show. Uh, take two, in this case. I have uh, insta-screwed up on the pre-show and forgot to hit record. <laughs> okay, so we're, uh, for, there's no way you possibly you know this, the but... When you the pre-show, <laughs> when you botched that, you've really done something. Yeah, we've, this is our second attempt at recording. The first attempt, I forgot we were supposed to record the pre-show, and I started it like the normal show, and then I remembered that uh, it wasn't, and I got mixed up. And so here we are again. You don't always hate this show. No, when I, I love this show so much. <laughs> but when I'm, you know, you listen to a podcast, right? And you're, and you can tell there's a, they're pissed off. Well, I'm back. I screwed this thing <laughs> right. up, and I record it. And you think, and, it, and they're always like, man, that first recording was, and I, it, it was, was so great. It was, it was and, immaculate. And, and I'm always like, well, dang. Every time I hear this, I'm like, dang. I know I missed the good stuff. Now they're giving me the crap. Right. And so we can assure you, our faithful viewers, <laughs> listeners, that what you we missed nothing, not and it was garbage. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, our new room. This is uh, the new Amigo Studio. Uh, this is a render created by Paul Kitching. Um, and... Uh, I got in touch with Paul over uh, a misunderstanding because apparently there are two Paul Kitchings that are really into the Amigos. This is Big Hour 19. And then in the 19, remember that song? And then the 19, 19, 19. So, how's it going, Aaron? Uh, how's it going, Boat? <laughs> <laughs> and this is our new background. Mm. Let me delete us. You suck, boat. <laughs> we're looking for clips, and we're looking. Humana, humana, humana. Ho, 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 ha. Right, I you. get no kick from champagne. No. Okay. No, it's good. Now it's my turn. Hey, hey. You were much louder than I was. Hey. Say something loud, boat. Hey. Not that loud. Damn. Hey. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, you broke the tax scam, but <laughs> everybody, it's John and Aaron from the Amigos. I hope you guys are enjoying Amy West. Seems like a really cool event. Uh, I'm sorry that not everybody could participate in person this time, but I'm so glad that the premier event of Amiga in California is still going strong. You ever been to Sacramento boat? I uh, no, no. No, Sack Town. That's is that what they, what call, they call it? Right? I think so. Sack Town. Hmm. Sounds kind of vulgar. It does. So let me ask you a question. You've been to California, right? Yes. Okay. So what's the vibe out there? It's a laid back vibe. You know, it's yeah. the West Coast. It's the best coast. How's it different from West Virginia? Because I kind of thought we were laid back. Well, we're a different kind of laid back. Our laid back is drug induced. Of course, theirs probably is too, but just a different kind of drug. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a more expensive drug, that's for sure. <laughs> this is, you know, this. 
We, this is no good. What are you we talking can't about? Send this, to this. this is horrible, Bo. You just broke <laughs> it, man. We were doing just yeah, fine. Yeah, I did. We can't talk about drugs at Amy West. That's all it we was do. My fault. And it was my fault. I also said Sacktown was vulgar. <laughs> you can't send that. <laughs> you down with KGB? Oh, baby, you know me. Yeah. The issue is, is that that lemon juice is really overpowering. That sucks, but that's no yeah. good. That's a fail. Um, so we don't have any events to promote this week. If you have any Amiga events coming up in your area of the world and you'd like us to share them, uh, just write us at amigos at everythingamiga.com and uh, we will we will put the we'll put the word out. Aaron. We should start an event. You want to do that? What, what should we call it? Amiga West Virginia. It's that's original and insightful. Mm -hmm. And what do you think we draw to something like that? You and me. I'm thinking classic computer West Virginia, something like that. that you yeah. might get some action There's, on that. There might be some action in that. And maybe we can cross promote it with something. What's mm -hmm. hot right now? How about uh, 21 Pilots? Now how about classic computer Final Fantasy Chrono Trigger 5000? Let's do it. I think it could happen. We can do it. And over maybe at, uh, we can do it over at the wave pool. You know, we can add in because we're in West Virginia. Clogging, clogging. Oh. <laughs> meth. <laughs> we're in West Virginia. <laughs> Good God! This is a family show. We don't want to promote meth. West Virginia Retro Computer and Clogging Festival. And clog com. Can you clog? No. You know what clogging is. I do know what clogging is. It seems to be a girl's pastime. Oh, that's going to get you in trouble. Who Have clogs you? that you know that's a boy? Besides, Jessica White. Just that's not that's mountain dancing. He does. That's a different thing. Are you kidding me? You don't want to piss off the whites. That's true. Trust me, look them up. I don't see color. Yeah! Yeah! Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Lionheart. Hell yeah! Aaron, what's your spirit animal? Lion. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, well, is it because of the lack of a mane? Yes, and the lack of a man, really. Man, you know, we're doing this live and I hate to beat you down right in front of this crowd, Boat, on your special day. How's it feel? It's your special Boat Fest day. What do you think about this uh, gathering? Look at this Look at this throng of people out here. You, you know, uh, we, we have quite a few wonderful, wonderful people here. Maybe one day we'll actually see them. <laughs> do you do any mime or puppetry? I do a little of both. Really? Can we see a little something? I, not, I mean, I'm not prepared. Can you do a little it's... mime right now? I, I've got I got this one. You ready? Yeah. You like that? I don't. That's getting into a car. That's really? Yeah. Wow. I'd stick with puppetry then. Sir. Okay. Well, you'll see a little puppetry next week. I never had a cool puppet. My puppets are just like the kind you stick your hand up and go like, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And normally we would use those to irritate pets. Or when Brent was born, I would just kind of traumatize him with it. I'm going to get you, blah, 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 stuff like that. But I didn't have a good puppet. Oh, look at that. So uh, I had a puppet, this guy. He is uh, he was my friend when I taught elementary school. And so... Uh, he looks like yeah. you with hair. That's, uh, yeah, exactly. The kids, th I th the kids thought he was my brother. So uh, Can you do yeah. a little something for us here, Boat? I can do a little something for you. It's a little silly voice, you know? And I can it sounds just like your voice, Boat. Listen, I'm not the king of the silly voice. Make okay? a real silly one. Let's hear like an English accent. With, yeah, let's go for it. Good day, governor. Uh, chap. Um, scone. I'm just down with the, um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's good, Dandy. Very good, boat. Thank you. Wow, Thank that guy should, he should host the show. He's great. You need to break him out more often. What do you need me for? What's that guy's name, Boat? You don't know his name? No. I, I feel bad now. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me forlornly that I've never named him. You've never named him? I'm sure that I did, but, you know, it's been 12 years since I taught at elementary oh. school. Oh, man. Oh, um. man. That was too much. <laughs> Our I do remember getting in a fight about a game one time. Mm -hmm. That was recently, though. Yeah, it? that was recently. And I think, yeah, that was at the end of the show when <laughs> no. we were like, what are we going to play next week? You know and what then... it was? It was that god awful top banana. Right. So I hear next week uh, 
you're going to be doing some CD32 games on ARG Presents. That's right. Yeah, that's what came up on the wheel, man. Crazy, eh? Aren't you worried you're spreading it a little thin? This is where we do Amiga stuff. Okay, vote. Sorry, man. It'll never happen again. I'm taking it right off the wheel. I'm sorry about that, man. I'm sorry, man. I promise. I'll, I'll take it right off the wheel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you wearing a Mac shirt? That's right. I, I am appalled by that. I wore this shirt to appall and enrage you. I, I can't it's... believe it. I am, <laughs> I'm appalled and enraged at that shirt. This that is shirt. my brother got this for me really? at Apple HQ in oh, Cupertino. God. It's the only place where you can buy such apparel. It's the only place you can pay seventy dollars for a shirt. Hey, That's... this is it's all about the numbers. You know, we've got six hundred and eighty subscribers now on our YouTube channel. And I think we might have had 30 followers on Twitch. Maybe so. we could hit that big 700. Ooh. Yeah, that'll be a big event. I never thought our video channel would get very big. I know, you've always hated the video stuff. Well, I'm not a, what I would call video appropriate. You look at this, this. No look at this. This is the leader. The leader is good, the leader is great. The Tasman edition. And uh, they've got a, a girl. This is, this is great. This is, I'm going to read you this. What is happening in this picture? Michaela Isherwood watches her sister Stella Isherwood compete in the Merman Limited Junior Possum Throw. That's what I thought she was doing. She is throwing a possum. Look at that. I'm holding it up for all of our New Zealand sounds a lot like West Virginia. It does. It does. We'd be right at home there. It's a, you're throwing a possum? I've never been in close contact with a possum. I see them deceased on the side of the road, but that's about it. All right. So up until this point, we've been, uh, we've Jeez, been. You can't see the. Go ahead, listen. We've been hampered by the okay. length of my USB 3 cord. Is that what it, that's yeah. what's been hampering us? So, uh, Not I'm, our lack of town or I, bad look? Is, that's the only thing, the USB 3 cord. I'm ready. Let's go for it. Okay. Let's go give it some time. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to talk about hired guns. Mm -hmm. No. Stop this. <laughs> Did you really do Soccer Kid? Yeah. I thought Soccer we Kid was said, this We week. said at the end of the show last week that we were, oh, man, we're in trouble. <laughs> I mean, we're really not. I did Soccer Kids. I thought Soccer Kid was this week. I thought so Hired Guns was next week. You didn't play any Hired Guns? No, I played Soccer Kid. All right. Well. What? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Boy, what'd you think of those, Boat? Boy, it's... It, it's 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 amazing to me that we've been able to carry on. <laughs> With Something tells me that it was drinking was involved. It seemed like almost every one of those scenes there was an enormous keg of booze. Yeah, I'd like on the to table. thank Graham W. Vebke, who early on in the show just sent us case after case of hard my. liquor. This is the so. only highly flammable show yeah. in all podcasting. But yeah, yeah. You think we can squeeze out another hundred before we call it a day? I think we can. I think we've got what it takes. You know we. We really want to thank the Amigos Game Selection Committee. That was yeah. one of the, the one of the worst parts of the show was having to come up with a game to play every week. Yeah, and we've got a good system now. Yeah, we've got a good system and then a good group of people led by the indomitable Pixels at Dawn. Yeah, and Pixels also does some background crap to keep us in the loop. Yeah, he does. You know, but all those guys are great. The Discord helps with everything we mm -hmm. do because it's not just the game selection guys. They help us figure out how to load stuff. They yes. give us copies of stuff that we can't find. Mm -hmm. They explain the rules. Sometimes they explain the <laughs> gameplay to us. Right. They explain the things that we are too dumb to figure out. Sometimes they provide hard hard drive uh, images, the whole nine yards. And not just on Amigas, but all the shows that we do, including ARG, they help us up exponentially every week. So all those guys, we appreciate that. Plus, it's always nice to get like instant feedback. The reviews have been great. We didn't have that stuff early on. We yeah. didn't get any reviews, so that's always fun because often the reviewers will point some stuff out that we forget or we mm -hmm. don't mention. So just all the people, if you've ever uh, supported us, sent us a, a, a note, uh, left a uh, review on, what is it, still Apple Podcasts or whatever, if you've ever done that, if you've ever dropped us a dime somewhere down the line, we appreciate you. Uh, that kind of stuff keeps us cooking. You hear it a lot where people are like, ah, this is the stuff that keeps the pipes the lights on stuff. But I mean, really, if no one's interested in what you're doing, you just stop. Mm. There's a reason why there's six podcasts average. It's because they did it. They weren't into it enough or no one cared and they just gave up. So it makes it a lot better and more fun for us to know that people are interested after all these years and hearing what we think about Amiga games. <laughs> if you think about how ludicrous that is, you didn't know what an Amiga was when we started. I'm still not quite sure. <laughs> 
But one thing, if 400 episodes, if they've done anything, they've finally won you over to AGA after all these years. Never, never. You know, Aaron, we asked our Discord community if, uh, if they would like to uh, post a quick note celebrating episode 400. David Hearn Ryder writes, Congrats on 400 episodes. Over here in the land down under, I had no idea the Amiga was even a thing in the U.S. It wasn't. Imagine my surprise finding a podcast series called Amigos where two cool cats hailing from Hurricane, West Virginia, which I'd also never heard of, killing it when it came to reviewing Amiga games. The rapport, the banter, the talking smack, someone may have called flashback Euro trash. The reviews themselves are ace. Thanks for the sunshine, Bowden Aaron, and here's the next 400 episodes. He's got away with words. He does. You notice that? He does. Yeah, I've literally got his book in there. Escape the Commodore 64. C64. I think I don't think he can say Commodore. <laughs> Mitsuyama writes, Congratulations on reaching 400 episodes. What an achievement. Here's to 400 more, all covering AGA Euro platformers for Boat and Aaron to enjoy. Yeah. Perhaps a greater achievement is the community you've built around the shows. This is such a great place to hang out in. Well done, and keep up the great work. Thank you, Mitzi. Thank you, Mitz. He'll be there. That's Can't right. Wait to meet He'll Mitz. Be there. We're going to meet Mitz in person at yeah. Boat Fest. Lord Soup writes, more Amigos Retro Gaming. Thank you, Soup. <laughs> I, well, there's more to come. Uh, Pajaco6502 writes, 400 episodes. Wow. Congratulations, folks. Even though I had an Amiga back in the day, the Amigos still managed to introduce me to games I never knew existed and give me a great excuse to revisit some old favorites along the way, and I've made some friends along the way. I've been hanging out for a good couple years, and it's been a blast. Long. May it continue. And I do want to uh, single Bajaco out as being the uh, master reviewer. And uh, he's yeah. sort of become the patron saint of ARG. Yeah, yeah. Pajaco uh, also helps us out sometimes, yeah. too. We appreciate you, Pajaco. Thank you for your kind words, man. Uh, Lobsterminator writes, I first found this podcast through Sprite Castle relatively early on, but I never would have guessed that this random retro podcast would lead to making many good friends from all over the globe a few years later. Great podcast, even greater community. Here's to many more years of Amigos. And I do want to give a special shout out to Rob Black O'Hara because I personally would have never uh, done a show if it hadn't been for Sprite Castle. Yeah. He sort of showed me the way that this could be done. And also getting on board early with his uh, throwback network or flashback. I can't remember what it was. It was the called. throwback the network. Throwback network. Yeah. That was that gave us some traction early on. That that uh, the you know really the Coco Crew are still on that network, and even Flax not on. It. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Thank you, Lobby. By the way, Lobby, a uh, uh, staple. Yeah, uh, yeah. and a and a, a, an excellent person. You know, Lobster Terminator has a he's created the album of the week uh, uh, channel yes. on Discord. That's very which popular. Has turned into one of my favorite channels. Listening to a a new album every week, so I appreciate Lob for everything that he's. It's done. almost like your old podcast. Yeah, yeah. Bumface Pooh Hands writes, I have nothing clever to say, but congratulations. Here's to another hundred before you make uh, before you make it your first Amiga model. That's true. And then only another hundred till you hit the best Amiga model of all the 600. Oh, man. By the way, a guy, uh, Bumface Pooh Hands with a name like that, you don't have to be any more clever. You've, you've killed it. <laughs> and finally, Matthew Perron mm -hmm. writes, congrats, boys, for 400 episodes. Hope you still have fun. Thank you for all the entertainment and for having built such a great community. And cheers to 400 more at least. Yeah. And, you know, before we move on here, I don't want to. So, we've had a lot of longtime uh, subscribers over the years that have really they've been with us for, like, O'Brien's, for example, Chris Folds. We had a lot of guys that were in Dreamcatch and those guys back from way, way back in the day. Appreciate those guys, too. The fella that did Amigos Magazine back in the day. Mm -hmm. That's the Neil really. Mansell. And you're, you, what, Reminded me of this was you talking about the Throwback Network. When we got on that network, I mean, I felt like King Dong, right? You know, and because I was like, man, I flax on the network mm -hmm. with us, you know. Uh, and it was those. It's funny those little incremental things have just made it fun, you know. And it, we still feel froggy, man, mm -hmm. you know, about it. Uh, and so uh, um, it's nice to uh, it's nice to for people to enjoy the show. I'm happy that people are still digging it, you know, and hopefully. Uh, we can uh, get a little better in the next 100. I, I think our reviews have gotten a lot better since the old days. That's the one thing I'm real proud of on the show is that because we were 
I thought I said, we're, we just know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't even call them reviews at the time. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I've played enough of these games now to where you, I have an idea of what I'm looking for. Right. You know, and I, and I think that goes a long way. But thanks, everybody, for uh, sticking with us, and hopefully we'll keep the ball rolling, Boat. Aaron, what are we going to be playing next week? Let's find out, shall we? Oh, man. This Loom. one. This one's going to be tough right here, Loom, because I know this is a kind of a complex game. This is a, is this a LucasArts this boat? This is a LucasArts point-and-click adventure, yeah. but it's unlike any other point-and-click yeah. you've ever played. I've heard, I've heard about this one, and I know it's... I remember trying this one time, and I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I'm out. But I've, I've said that about so many of the games we've played both yeah. over the years. So, thank you, as always, everybody, for listening. Thank you for all of our patrons, all of our Twitch subs. We appreciate everything. We will see you next week, and until then, adios. adios.